This week's task then is to produce an image, a drawing or a painting, where we have to look to find the figure. So including a figure, but where the figure isn't obvious, where you've managed to manipulate or manage the colour, the tone, the composition, maybe even the amount of pattern, um, in such a way that we'll, we will discover the figure. I think it's important that it's possible to see the figure, um, but not uh, instantly. So I thought it would be perhaps useful for you to look over some of the work that you've produced over, uh, it's almost a year now, um, and perhaps revisit um, a theme, uh, a figurative theme that we've done. So I've just laid out a few of the things. So I was doing something early on, working with tone on an interior. We did the door to door, uh, room to room rather, not door to door. Those are my little studies for that. Uh, with the gardeners, the girls in a in the boat, the railway station we did recently in the cafe, and so on. So I have been revisiting those. So actually, this was looking at the the um, a tonal image of an interior, and I've actually put Ruth as a writer in that one. So I'll I'll go over that. This was one of the um, images of the girls in the boat. So that was Roslyn, and here what I've done is work on blue paper with mainly blues to paint the fig, to draw the figure, uh, and then use other colours to draw attention to different parts of the painting, parts of the image. Uh, and this was working with the room to room. Um, Inez was doing some sewing, and it's a view through the door. And again, it's going to be a very busy patterned, colourful composition, and I'm going to control the light on her. So let me just do one or two of those um, images. So for the one working with the interior, and I had some reference material. So I can provide you, if you, you could look on your old emails perhaps, but... Otherwise, I can provide you with some of the photo references. But it's good old tonal rubberway drawing, which I'm going to I'm going to demonstrate because I can make some useful points. I think about how uh, how to manage the figure. So I'm setting the scene first. So I want to have uh, the window, and there was a curtain. And I think actually it's quite good, as I say, to make some points using this charcoal rub away um, approach. Because actually, once I, so I'm just gonna, I'm working with a photographic reference here. So we had the window open, that was quite nice. And the curtain there. So with Ruth sitting in the window, as she was being a writer, it would be, relatively easy to make her stand out you know she's as you can see the way I've begun this drawing she is a silhouette um, against the the um, window light and just to make that point if I take my eraser and get some light off here in the open window. Well, that stands out well. And I can also then work with the negative shape and make this writer stand out. But that's not, that's not what I want. I, I want the figure to be there, but not to be obvious. So let's manipulate things a little bit more. So if I take away some of that um, light around her head, she's not quite so obvious. Uh, I will make her a little bit better though. So I want to work with, I have an idea of what she's gonna be like. So I'm just, just, adjust, just improving her figure a little bit. 
But hopefully what I'm, I'm going to be illustrating to you here is in this instance, because this is a tonal piece of work, by putting in light, light and dark contrast, I will draw attention to particular parts of my drawing. So there she is, like that. So I can maybe soften that bit of drawing. I've said that I think it's um, it should be an imperative that we can find the figure in, in the composition. So it's not that you're hiding the figure so that it's almost impossible to see it. Um, but the idea being that you wouldn't see the figure immediately. So I'm not going to take off light around there. I'm going to try and draw attention to other parts of the composition. So we can get lots of light coming through the window here. That would be good. Um, and maybe get quite a busy sort of bookcase. So just by putting the light and shade there and perhaps something on the table. So she's going to be a writer and maybe we should have. So where I put lots of contrast, so light and shade, that's where the attention is going to be. So I want to have a little bit of light on her. But using, this is why I think this rub away technique is so good because you can um, clean off light. Uh, and if that is too obvious, well then you can smudge it a bit, take things away. A little bit light on her hair. And then I think I want to make this bookcase quite busy as well. So I've got a lot going on there. So this isn't just tone. This is also probably pattern, texture. It's making that part of the drawing much busier. So that, that's to illustrate that. I think by putting her bang in the middle, I've maybe made my life more difficult. If I had moved her over and had a lot more window, I quite like the idea of having a lot more table as well and plenty of things going on on the table. So that would be one approach, the uh, charcoal rub away way of um, where I'm, I'm managing tone, um, light and shade. So another one I thought might be worth illustrating. So there was um, an image on the uh, email of a painting by Robert McLaurin whose landscapes, I love Australian landscapes and Scottish landscapes, but there was a great um, example of, I think it's possibly him, he's a fisherman as well as a painter, and um, it's a, a fisherman in a boat on, on a, a lake, I think in Australia, uh, there's lots of trees and everything is blue, basically. The sky maybe isn't, the sky is a bit lighter, so that made me think uh, if I wanted to work with some of these images uh, from when we were doing Girls in the Boat. That's the one I did of uh, Arslan and Marlisa. And this time then I'm going to work on some blue paper and I'm going to work with blue pastels. So. I don't want, I'm going to make uh, Rosalind quite large in the foreground. So I'm not going to play her down through scale. It's not a little figure that's um, less obvious. It's going to be quite a, a significant figure. But I'm going to use colour as a way of subduing her role in, in the composition. So initially I'm just going to stick with blues, blue on blue paper. And obviously at the moment she stands out, but I'll do a bit of smudging. Maybe I'll just do a wee bit to her, a bit more to her, but um, for putting some light on her, I'm using pale blue or so I'm staying with, with that palette 
for the figure and the boat. And then somewhere else in the composition, I might start to use some opposite colours. So I could use some brown, some just basically some warm colours. Or we'll maybe get a little bit of, I did something like this actually when I, I was doing the girls in the boat, we had quite a dramatic sky. Anything that's warm and uh, complementary, a complementary contrast. Maybe we should have a bit of a landmass over here as well. Let's have an island. Let's draw the attention uh, to the island and keep her, as I say, fairly, fairly monochrome, working with blues. Maybe we need to get a bit of reflection in the water. And probably this sky needs to be worked on a bit, just so I can connect everything. Um, so given that light, again, maybe I, maybe I should have moved her slightly, but given that light, I might just get a little bit more light. It's not so much on her head, but it might be, might be on her arms. So again, as I was saying, I feel that it's a good exercise not to make the figure completely disappear, but to manage the image in such a way that our attention isn't drawn straight to the figure, but that you use colour, um, the positioning of the figure, maybe scale in this, this, this instance, I haven't really used scale, um, as, as a way of yeah, managing. And if, if some of these colours get too strong, uh, I can either tone them down or I can perhaps increase the colour in another part of the painting, you know, I could go for a, uh, um, an incredibly colourful sunset. And uh, of course, I would want to be logical, consistent. So maybe I'd get a little bit of colour coming over here, but I would try and keep it as subtle as possible. So that's working with colour. Uh, as a way of managing the attention that different parts of the image generates. Then I was looking at these. This was early on um, when we were doing room to room. And I had a little study here, which I'm keen to work with again. So it was the, the view through to um, a bedroom, and actually, uh, Inez was doing some sewing and there's, she's got one of these dressmakers dummies. So I thought I would like to work with the figure, her seated um, in the window, looking through the door, but actually draw more attention to the dummy um, and all sorts of other things around. So I would do that partly through colour possibly even through um, pattern. So this is my composition. So it's through an open door, so there's already lots of things in the way. You know, in terms of finding the figure, the figure is going to be further up the page, probably cropped a bit. There was that um, Bonnard image that I put on the email as well. So the, this is the, going to be the tailor's dummy. Um, and then the window here. So it's it's a number of things that are going to make that figure. That figure is going to be smaller. So she's sitting on the sofa, which is here. So in a way, the whole exercise, it's a kind of perhaps a reverse of what you might often be trying to do. Um, and by doing the opposite, I think you can probably learn a lot. Uh, it's a really good experience. Normally you would be probably trying to make your figure stand out. The figure is very important. The figure is very interesting. We want people to see the figure. But here by reversing the task, I think you probably learn just as much, possibly more, because 
You have to think differently. So that's where my figure's going to be. And I'll be using color, pattern, contrast. In this particular study, I ended up putting, I wanted her to stand out and I wanted to get the, the feeling of the light in the room. So I was putting lemon yellow and green on her shoulders and yellow in her hair to make her really stand out. So I won't be doing that here. Um, I'll maybe get a bit of colour in the windows so that they can stand out. Um, as I did before, there's going to be lots of colour in the carpet. And this might be quite a good way of, you know, I've explained what the task is, what the aim is. And you might find if you're interested in, in colour being the way in which things are made to stand out and the figure um, is made to be less significant in the composition. Well, you could actually, as I'm doing here, start with colours. So these are some of my main colours of the carpet and the door. And whilst I've done a little bit of drawing to um, find where the figure is and so on, I'm now just turning that those lines and those uh, bits of definition into colour. And, and that might be a good way in. So I was suggesting that I'd make the dummy stand out. Maybe originally, I mean, in that drawing it's black and white, but the black and white is also quite helpful. Um, and then I have the curtains with their pattern. So colour, and it could be given this is such a... Um, such a, yeah, such a busy composition. It could be that it's pattern as well that draws attention, takes the attention away from the figure. And again, on the email, um, there's a couple of images by Bernard Dunstan and by Vuillard. Dunstan was very influenced by Vuillard and there's, there's, there's some real similarities in, in those two images that I sent you. The, the Vuillard one, um, he'd worked, like I'm doing here, on some tinted paper and the figure actually is mainly made up of bare paper. And because there are areas of bare paper right through the drawing, the figure merges quite a lot with the surroundings. Um, the, the Dunstan image is of his wife standing next to the window uh, with San Gimignano uh, seen through the window. And uh, again, her colouring is quite similar to her surroundings. So she merges a fair bit with her surroundings. But um, the real attention in, in the image comes from the big window with a, you know, a clearly described view of, of that Italian town. So, you know, things are vying, the subject areas of the painting are, are vying with each other in order to get our attention. So I'm just working with the figure now here, and I, I'm not using as bright colours, but as I said, I want, I, I would set you... Um, the task of not making the figure completely disappear. So I think we need to be able to see the figure, but not straight away. So I've ended up making her much less colourful. And this, this doesn't work yet. I've got to play around with the colours so that they are convincing, creating some depth. Um, that's, that's helpful. If I, if I get a bit more colour in the door, 
then that means I can have that bright red carpet. Uh, and I maybe sometimes you've got to subdue colours a bit as well. I might get a bit of a get a shadow under the door that may well draw the attention towards us and so on. So I hope those are useful illustrations. I've done something tonal. I've done something working um, with colour and here this is colour and its pattern. There were other subjects, um, yes, that I thought were promising. Um, there was the cafe scene and the gardeners. So that, you know, that would be a chance to work with a figure in a landscape. I actually um, got out that landscape as well. This was a composition exercise, I think, extending the composition. But it might be, you know, in a green landscape, you want to put in a, a you know, a figure, uh, a green figure, is what I would do here. The Again, Robert McLaurin, if you look him up, um, most of his paintings, the Scottish ones and the Australian ones, most of them have a figure, which is a kind of self-portrait, I think. Uh, but the figures are generally small, so it's a sort of, it's almost like, I don't know, Caspar David Friedrich, it's small figures against sort of vast, dramatic landscape. Um, but they're important, they're very important. They uh, create a sense of scale, but also, I don't know if the word is a psychological scale. It's, I think it's the figure um, against, you know, creation or uh, nature and so on. Not against, but in relation to and generally dwarfed by um, the, the natural setting. So there we are. That's a number of ideas. I haven't gone as far as painting, um, but the points I've tried to make to do with tone and colour would uh, obviously follow through in painting. Uh, painting wet in wet, as I've been demonstrating previously, is very helpful because things are smudged and softened. So that would be a good device, especially at the beginning, for allowing you to lose your figure a bit. And then you have to float paint or let it dry. Um, as a way of um, reinforcing some of the elements, probably within the figure, that you want to make stand out. Or, as I've tried to demonstrate, it may not be that you make the figure, that you suppress the figure, rather that you bring out and emphasise other parts of the image so that the figure um, is a little bit... Uh, you know, you, the, the rest of the image competes successfully, distracts us from the figure. OK, so hopefully well, on Monday we can see some studies. And um, if you need any extra reference material, I've got all these sheets of figures from some of the things that we've previously done that I'm happy to provide you with.